All right, folks, it's time to make another trip. This time, Japan. Why don't you come along and check it out? Uh, okay, to be honest and perfect, I don't know where I am, I don't know which way to go find my hotel back to myself. So, that's the way it is. And then I'm here in Japan. Peace from Japan. Okay, here I am in one of my favorite places in the world. Osaka, Japan. So uh, what I decided to do is go from here, Osaka Station, to uh, Hiroshima. I've only got 24 hours here and in those 24 hours I'm gonna have to make the best of this little journey. It's 8 o'clock in the morning and the first thing I need to do is give myself something to eat and maybe a coffee. Let's do it. Okay, whatever you're in a train station here in Japan, if you get lost like I've lost and you don't know how to get to your destination, like I don't know how to get to my destination, there's always somebody that you can ask. Okay, now I got my ticket on the high speed train, but uh, I just found out it doesn't leave from this station, it leaves from our other station that's close by. I have to find either platform seven or eight uh, to catch my train to the other station to catch the high speed train. And these things leave on time. So my train leaves in exactly 20 minutes I'm gonna to have to find it good luck for me all right I'm lucky enough to make it to the other station on time it looks like I got 17 minutes to catch my train so I have to look around the station try to figure out where I can get the high-speed train from here but it's, it's pretty well marked, so hopefully I'll be able to find it. All right, so I found the train. It's awesome. And I managed to stop at a shop. I picked up my breakfast. <laughs> now I'm just waiting for the train to arrive. It's going to be pretty awesome, man. All right, so according to the sign over my head, my train has been delayed for about 15 minutes. This station is going to be the loudest station I've ever been in my life. Maybe that's typical of high speed train stations, but it is loud in here. Lots of announcements, lots of noise, lots of bells and whistles. See what I mean? Yeah, look at this thing. That's sick. All right, finally, here comes my train. <laughs> Alright, according to my ticket, I'm in car number 10, seat 6 Delta. Let's find that. Definitely something I never expected I would be doing in my life is taking the high speed train here in Japan. And I'm lucky enough to be in what they call green class. And the green class compartment here in, uh, on the Shenkensen, Shenkensen <laughs> train, the bullet train, is, uh, is like the first class compartment. It's really, really nice. Very comfortable, very spacious, as you can see. And nice windows to be able to see what's going on out there. I'm sure as time goes on, as I get closer and closer to uh, Hiroshima, 
I'll be able to see more and more. Awesome. I'm loving this. Well, it's time for me to have my stack, whatever I bought in that store. So let's have a look. I got my green tea and I got my little bento box kind of thing. Look at that. Looks awesome. Comes with chopsticks and everything. Unagi, some eggs, some rice underneath. Oh, yeah, delicious, man. This is awesome. Oh, we have arrived. The train is about to stop in Hiroshima. Let's get off. Hey, as I walk through this cool place, I can't help but think about what this place might have looked like 78 years ago when the Enola Gay came across and dropped an atomic bomb on the place where it was just completely uh, flat. There was nothing left. Totally devastating. And now it's a big, gigantic, vibrant city. Of course, 78 years ago, it's a long time. Now let's go check out what else this place has to offer. Believe it or not, here in Hiroshima, they're using the same tram lines as they did before the atomic bomb was dropped. It's pretty freaking amazing. The system is still in play. Pretty awesome, man. Really nice. Okay, well, the bridge that I'm standing on right now is the T Bridge, known as the T Bridge. Now, the reason why they call it that is because it kind of goes over that way and it comes over this way like a T, right? In the middle of the bridge. If you look on Google Maps, it's uh, pretty easy to find. But Back in the 1945, they obviously didn't have Google Maps. So they used this as a reference point. The Enola Gay was 31,000 feet above this bridge. They seen the bridge because it's easy to spot from 31,000 feet on a clear day. And they dropped uh, the bomb here on Hiroshima. Now they missed the bridge. They missed their target. The bomb went off about 300 meters in that direction. But considering there's no laser guidance in 1945 and they didn't have smart bombs in 1945, 300 meters off your target can be considered pretty damn accurate. Now, the bomb itself, it went off at approximately 2,000 feet in the air. And according to scientists at the time, if the bomb detonated at 2,000 feet in the air, it would create the maximum amount of damage possible. And history tells us they weren't wrong. This was the only structure that was left standing, and that's why now it's a memorial. And uh, if you have a look, they have a little uh, plaque here of what the building actually once looked like. So behind me stands a very cool monument. I took a really cool picture through there, and a lot of people are standing in the queue to do that. And you can see in the distance over there, the, uh, the building that was the last uh, left here after the atomic bomb dropped. Uh, it's a, this is called Peace Park. Again, it's just a beautiful place to come. A uh, beautiful place for people to see here in the center of Hiroshima. So this might be very subtle, but if you look up at the dome, and you see the dome is a little bit crooked at the top. It's pushed in one way because the explosion of the uh, atomic bomb was a little bit in that direction. And the blast actually bent the metal uh, structure. And you can see a little bit of a bend in the roof. Right. But I have to say, it's awfully beautiful walking through some of these parks with all the cherry blossoms in bloom. It's a beautiful time of year. The season only lasts two weeks. And this is supposed to be the best day today. So I'm really lucky to be here today. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Well, there's a lot of things going on here in Hiroshima on such a beautiful day today, and it's Saturday, so a lot of people are off. But I don't have time to enjoy all these things because I got to continue on with my little exploration. Like I said uh, earlier on, I have only got 24 hours here in Japan today, 
so I need to get back on the train and uh, start another adventure in another city as quick as I can. So let's check it out. But I'd like to thank Hiroshima for having me here, man, because it was an awesome little visit. It was short and sweet. Like I said, I don't have that much time. I'm making the best of it. The drivers wear gloves. So now, back to standing in the queue to get my ticket on a high-speed train over to Kobe. Well, I'm back on the Shenkatsen high-speed bullet train going from Hiroshima. And now I'm going to Kobe. And there's a specific reason why I'm going to Kobe. You'll see shortly. So the reason I came to Kobe is because this is the home of Kobe beef and the home of Wagyu steaks. And I'm going to have a Wagyu steak here in Kobe, a Kobe beef steak while I'm here. It's going to be awesome. So I came here to the world's best place to have a Wagyu beef steak, Kobe beef in Kobe. Well, so that's the Kobe beef. Fantastic. This is going to be incredible. Okay, now this is awesome and something I wasn't expecting. With the Kobe steak, you get a certificate. Now, this certificate actually tells you uh, the, the farmer's name, the farm, and the registration of the cow. And this certificate is amazing because not only does it give the birth date of the cow, it gives the, the mother's name, and the father's name, and the grandparent's name, and the registration number of the cow. Plus, it has a nose print, like a fingerprint of the cow itself. That's incredible. Of course, the best way to have one of these uh, Kobe steaks is medium rare. And that's actually the, my favorite way to have a steak. And that's the way the chef is going to be making it for me today. If you ever have a chance to come to Kobe, don't pass up the opportunity to have a Kobe steak. Put on the wasabi and the salt and garlic. Wasabi, oh, okay. salt, and the garlic. Yeah, wasabi, salt, and garlic. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let me try that. A little bit of wasabi to get garlic chip. And just a little bit of salt. Yes. Oh my god. That's amazing. Oh, it's incredible. Wow. Uh, this lemon soy sauce, Japanese ponzu. This miso. Lemon soy sauce yes, and miso. Miso, yes. Okay. Beef and vegetable sauce. I like this combination. Wasabi with the garlic. A little wasabi, some garlic, some, soy, uh, some sea salt. It's unbelievable. Mm. So now I normally have my steaks medium rare which is fantastic. He suggests I try a medium, just so I see the difference. Why not? And this is a mind-blowing experience as it is. This medium one. Mm. The care that he takes in cooking these things is amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. And he cooks them to perfection. Grilled vegetables, wagyu. Wow, this is totally amazing. Never experienced anything like this in my life, and I don't think I ever will again. I'm so glad I came here. You know, all I can say is, wow, what just happened? That has to be one of the most incredible meals I've ever had in my life. And I initially came here just saying, well, I'm in Kobe, let's have some Wagyu, let's have a Kobe steak. Just because, you know, I had no idea it was going to be this kind of an experience. And I had no idea you get an actual certificate of the cow. Not just a certificate, but you get a complete history 
of the cow itself. The chef was phenomenal. The steak was phenomenal. The experience was second to none. I'm beside myself. I wasn't expecting that. And I'm really glad I did it. This is a once in a lifetime thing that I almost missed because I was just fooling around. But I don't want to wash the taste out of my mouth because it was so good, but so is this Japanese whiskey. Cheers. All right, well, that was Fast and Furious. Now I'm just stomping down the streets here at Kobe, and uh, I need to get on the metro and go do something else. Because daylight's running out, slowly and surely, and uh, I need to take advantage of the time that I got left. Let's do it. Well, I'm quickly losing daylight, but uh, I'm back in Osaka, and I'm looking at the cherry blossoms here in Osaka, which are really, really fantastic. Now this is one of the best areas in the city to, to look at the cherry blossoms on this side of the river, on that side of the river. It's amazing. And this, this river is quite famous because 300 years ago, they used to take a boat on this river and go all the way to Kyoto on this river out here. Pretty awesome. Cherry blossoms down here are beautiful. The street food, just the environment, the vibe, it's really nice. Just as beautiful in the nighttime as it is in the daytime, actually. Another really great area here in Osaka is an area called Shishanbashi, where I am right now. And it's a shopping arcade. It's huge, it's indoor. Well, it's not really indoor, it's kind of outdoor, but it's covered, it's got a covered roof. So you won't get rained on on a rainy day, which is pretty awesome. And they got everything here. There's high end, low end, uptown, downtown. There's all kinds of cool shops in this area. I like coming here, it's pretty neat. And on the streets beside here, right? You know, a little tiny street beside this place. There's great bars and restaurants and everything else. It's a, it's a go-to place, you have to come here. Anytime I come to Osaka, in this area in Shishanbashi, I really feel like I'm in a foreign country, in an Asian country. It's totally different than anywhere else you go in the world. It's got some great food, it's got a great atmosphere. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of people out here, a lot of things to see and do. It's just like different than anywhere else you go in the world. Walking around here in Shishanbashi has got me hungry. I'm looking for a seafood restaurant, but I can't seem to find one anywhere. Not left, not right. No seafood restaurants in the area. I'm really surprised. Okay, so that's gonna be it for me today, man. Uh, from Osaka. Fantastic little trip to Japan. Uh, hopefully next time it'll be longer than 24 hours anyway. Well, at the end of the day, food and drinks in abundance. So I gotta get back on the metro. Get back to the hotel and get some sleep. I'm leaving you. Well, that was cool, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, like and subscribe. Hit that like button. Do me that favor. It'd be awesome for me. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment. You want to see something else? Tell me you want to see something else. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for being here for me, and I hope you enjoy. Have a great day. See you out there. Oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Alright, let's try and do this again because there's like a billion people around crashing into everybody. Uh, okay. In uh, Hiroshima to get along, to get around. To get along. Monument of uh, that. Uh, messed that up totally. Let me do this again. God, I'm dying of a hangover, I need a copy.